Ah, yes. Look at all the snow here in Stony Brook, New York. Time for week two of the college lacrosse season as a number 20 Stony Brook Seawolves take on the Bryant Bulldogs. And we bring you into our broadcast booth, Sam Niederman, along with Tim Tuttle. Tim, you look at both of these teams, opened up their seasons last week. Bryant, an emotional 9-8 to win against Providence at home. Stony Brook, a 20-8 to shellacking against Sacred Heart at home as well. They're both in one-bid leagues. They know their ticket to the postseason is in-conference play, but they get a nice little measuring stick here in the non-con this afternoon. Yeah, absolutely. Again, it's going to be a great matchup of a high-flying offense of Stony Brook against a, a really good defense. Again, a 9-8 tight win for Bryant last week, so it'll be a great matchup today. You mentioned the high-flying offense for the Seawolves. If there's anything we've learned after their 20-goal output, they got some honchos and can beat you in different ways. Absolutely. You know, on the attack here, you know, out of the 20 goals scored last week, the attack had 11. So, you know, you want to stop Corey, uh, you know, Dylan and Tommy Hahn. I mean, those guys are high flying. I'm sure there's going to be an emphasis on them getting it done today. Uh, but again, like we said, that, that, that equalizer could be a goaltender, and uh, Brian has a good one. They have got some honchos, and we talked with Mike Pressler, the Brian head coach, before this one. He said they're a handful. We're going to have to find a way to track down all of these guys. Dylan Palanetti, six goals, the most by any Stony Brook player in his debut game. Matt DeMeo and Corey Van Genhoven each had a hat trick. And then the X factor there, the nine different goal scorers for the Seawolves putting out 55 shots. No doubt. I mean, it's, a tall, it's a tall task for, for Brian. I mean, you know, like I said, you had 11 from the attack, and then, you know, you had nine more goals scored by the midfield. Uh, it, it's it's going to be a test. It's going to be fun to watch. I'll tell you that, though. But but Brian's got a tall test to stop Stony Brook today. And if they want to stop him, you better bring a goalie. And they've got a great one in Luke Caracciolo. Absolutely. I mean, he had a big time day uh, last week. He had 16 saves, uh, 18 last year. As you see on the graphics right there against Stony Brook. Hey, uh, you know, anybody I'll tell you, a former goalie myself, you know, it, you get someone in there getting hot, it could frustrate the offense, maybe make them think a little bit of how they want to shoot the ball, they want to shoot the ball. So look for Luke to have a good day today. Mike Pressler said they got the Luke of last year against Providence and today we're also going to be looking at the face-off X that's a big key to this one no absolutely and again you know uh, you know I, I think that uh, you know these two units okay are, are tremendously successful at what they do with the new rules being in place all right but hey look at the rule the rule should be I want to keep it on the ground long enough for my team to pick it up right and that's what we'll get today through these two face-off units Stony Brook dominated Sacred Heart for 76 percent of the draws Deskowitz 12 of 13. Nathan La Liberty is really good for Bryant, a true freshman, the top faceoff recruit in the country. He went 12 of 17 on opening weekend against Providence. Well, that's going to be a good one. New England versus New York. Bryant versus Stony Brook. When we come back, we'll have lineups and the opening faceoff here at Laval Stadium on Lax Sportsnet. So we'll see how this Bryant offense starts to settle in. It could be a game of tempo where they try and slow things down. They only scored nine goals last week, and it was enough to beat Providence in the opener, and it was because of that man on the ball right there. Kevin Groninger, a redshirt freshman out of Orange County, California, had two. Those were the difference, and he rushes in here and slots it home top shelf for the opener. A lot of confidence there with a great job. Good dodge, not very good slide help there from Stony Brook, and he buried it. Bryant goes one up. Inside of 20 seconds of play, and it's Kevin Groninger take another look, his third goal on the season. Yeah, he got caught on the trail there a little bit, and uh, you know, defensively, and he was able to get underneath the slide you saw was a little late, and he was able to put it home. Anthony Palma making just his second career start in goal for Stony Brook. It wasn't really tested that much last week against Sacred Art. He did have the 10 saves. That one there, a laser beam to start, and it's one nothing Bryant. Yeah, absolutely. A tough one there, too. It's right on top of him. You know, I mean, you know, a slide came a little late, though. So uh, we'll give Anthony a little pass on that one. Nathan Law Liberty wins back-to-back face-offs to start for Bryant. He went opposite Austin Deskowitz, who went 12 for 13 last week for Stony Brook. Yeah, and I also maybe this is good for Stony Brook Steve, man. Get a little tested early here. Didn't get a big test last week uh, against Circuit Hot. So let's see how they uh, they tighten it up here. Remember, no Mark O'Rourke for Bryant today. He's got 91 career goals, and he scored seven for Bryant in their win against Stony Brook last season. A yeah. shot from Trevor Weingarten goes wide, and the Bulldogs will keep possession. Bonayuto is the closest to it. It was a 15-11 Bryant win last season. It was a second-to-last game for the Bulldogs before COVID crashed the party. It was Stony Brook's last, and it was on the road in Smithfield, Rhode Island. 
Seven goals for O'Rourke in that one. And Luke Caracciolo, the goalie for Bryant, who we highlighted in the open, had a career-best 18 saves. Stony Brook makes their first stop on defense. And now the Seawolves will get their first look, try and get it out of their own half here and set up shop. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't think it got to the goal there, Sam. Uh, it looked like Rolf Trackle's back on that shot there as he came for the slide. Yeah, Coach Gulati was right. That nice, clean, clearing game today. All right, a little jump here with pole on pole. Good job. Way to handle it. Oh, pushing fast here. Mike McCannell off the play from Tom Dugan. Crushed from behind. Zach Coffey had the contact for Bryant. Yeah, that's the risk you want to take. You want to play fast. I mean, you know, uh, uh, McCallan is taking a little chance there. Uh, but not the numbers in our favor. Great job by, um, uh, excuse me, Fisk to jump him on the backside there. Bryant's defense, the strength of their team, according to head coach Mike Pressler. Yeah, again, their, their two long poles are uh, the best in the business, you know, between uh, Fisk and, uh, and Coffey. Penalty marker comes in. Yeah, we got uh, too many uh, uh, poor substitution there by Stony Brook. They got caught. Bryant on the attack. Ryan Dobrinsky over to Ben Ablady and a freshman. Had a goal last week against Providence. He's at X. Pestered out by C.J. Trenkel, captain defenseman for Stony Brook. Shot clock inside, 25 seconds. Logan McGovern opposite Jimmy Morrell, who had limited action last week for Stony Brook in the opener against Sacred Heart. Outside play, Mason Druin spikes one, and it took a deflection off of Cassidy. And we'll get a couple of subs on here for both teams. Yeah, we'll see uh, Brian spin up right away. Um, you know, they went one for four last week. Um, you know, so we'll see what happens here. They're a little poor substitution, like we said early on, right? So everybody wants to play fast, sub fast. And uh, when you try to do that, you know, you can make some mistakes. So it's a chance they're willing to take. So uh, we'll see Stony Brook's man down here against uh, uh, Brian's man up. 30-second illegal substitution penalty against Chris Piquel Jr. and Stony Brook. So Bryant's on the man advantage. The Bulldogs went 0 for 7 on the man up against Providence. Weingarten outside for Druin, and he hits on the left side. Mason Druin gives Bryant a quick start. Yeah, and the Bulldogs get their first man up goal of the season. Yeah, uh, Sunbrook was a little slow on the rotation to get back up top. You know, uh, he got his hands free. Uh, and he let it ride. A good, good low shot off stick side. A fast start for the Bryant Bulldogs on the road. It's Mason Druin off the assist from Trevor Weingarten, the captain out of Bergen Catholic in New Jersey. And it's Bryant to Stony Brook nothing. And Nathan La Liberty off to the races again after another face-off win and another Bulldog goal. Nathan La Liberty, the freshman, right down the pipe. And it's a three spot for Bryant. Yeah, that's always a, you know, a real jump start for the offense. You know, if you're a face-off guy, able to burn one down the middle here. Uh, Stony Brook chooses not to rotate, okay? Um, uh, they let the face-off guy come right down. Unfortunately um, uh, for us, uh, you know, Devin O'Leary was a little late getting on that back check. He buried it. A timeout taken by Anthony Gallardi and Stony Brook. And the Bryant bench gets fired up. 11.38 to play in the first period. Bryant three, Stony Brook nothing. We'll step aside. It was D2 at the time in 2007. He has transformed them into a D1 contender. Five NCAA tournament appearances and a 3 nothing lead at Stony Brook today, and we're back after the timeout from Anthony Gallardi and the Seawolves. Yeah, uh, Coach Presser, a great start. You can't ask for anything better than this. So Bryant has dominated possession, dominated the face-off X, four for four to start, and they get to go to work again. Yeah, absolutely, and again, look at, look, at, look for them to just be poor, have some poise on offense, be patient, right? Work for the best shot, not the first shot. If you're Coach Anthony Gallardi for Stony Brook, what do you think he said in the huddle to try and regroup his team? Yeah, it's early. It's a long way to go. Just settle down. I mean, I, th I think, you know, you want your defense to be tested. I don't know if you want to get it any further from you than it is now. Uh, get a good step on D here, right? I, I think Palmer's just got to settle down, relax, get a good stop, uh, clear the ball, and, and, and you know, put, put a ball on the goal on your end. Uh, it'll definitely do a lot to relax everybody. Nathan La Liberty's goal off the faceoff made it a 3-0 game. And here are the Bulldogs again. 
Ben Abladian. Plays it outside for Sam Goforth, the junior from Chester Springs, Pennsylvania. McGovern at X. Outside for Bonnie Uto, a Long Island kid from Miller Place. Pride of the Panthers just down the road. McGovern spins past Cassidy and hooks it into the net. Wow, what a shot. Logan McGovern, his second goal of the season, and Bryant is racing with a 4-0 lead. Yeah, what a great little move by Logan. I mean, he, he goes right-handed, stops on a dime, comes back to his left, is able to sneak it around Palmer's uh, right shoulder. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to see, um, you know, uh, Cassie there get a little bit more on his hands, you know, get a little more pressure on Logan, you know, maybe tap him a little bit with that long pull. Uh, don't let him get his hands free there. I know Sabellos matched up on him, but uh, Cassie got caught on him right there and was able to, uh, you know, be on the trail and, and, and a good job by Logan burying it. Stony Brook's got to stop the bleeding in the faceoff X, and they do. Renz Conlon wins the draw opposite La Liberty. The Seawolves will try and regroup in the attacking half. It's the second goal of the season for McGovern, who dished out four assists against Providence last Saturday. Now the Seawolves offense. We hyped up so much in the open. 20 goals last week, 55 shots. They'll try and take their first crack at the Bryant defense here. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Sam, I mean, listen, you're not getting stops on defense. You better win faceoffs, and there's a good win, uh, win there by Renz. Chris Piquel Jr., the captain, working opposite Zach Coffey, a very talented long pull for Bryant. Gets a little flip from Matt DeBeo, plays it down, Van Genhoven, feet in front, Han, stopped by Caracciolo. Wow, what a big-time save there. Loose ball, Han working for it, in traffic with LeJohn Jones, big contact. Goal line extended and a whistle and a stoppage in play. Yeah, we got a little bit of push there off ball. Uh, good call by the official. Stony Brook resumes possession. Here's Dylan Palinetti, who made a splash with six goals in his debut. Redshirt freshman who transferred in from Maryland, a local kid from Ward Melville High School. Matt DeMeo coming off a hat trick, jukes to the inside, whips it towards goal and misses. Yeah, good little take there, good little hitch play on Matt. You know, step to his left, get to the middle of the field, let it ride. This is a Stony Brook offense that can beat you in, in different ways. They've got the athleticism with a guy in Corey Vangenhoven. They've got Canadians in the midfield like Mike McCannell who just roofed it up high there. And Anthony Gallardi talked with us before today say wondered did I put too much in during the preseason they just scored a let it rip against Sacred Heart that's always one of the thoughts you have as a coach offensive coach himself former OC at Towson and see what his offense can do to try to dig out of a hole but Van Genhoven's rip goes wide and Bryant was closer to it so they'll take possession yeah I don't know if that's a great choice by Corey there kind of a tough angle you know not no real uh creation there on his dodge to get his hands free kind of a you know, kind of I wish he had that one back shot. So we talked about this, Tim, in the open. Bryant is going to want to shorten the game. They want to make stops, win face-offs, and take their time with a shot clock when they have possession. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think you're going to do that. You're going to see uh, for them, I mean, I think, you know, obviously you having a three-goal lead, uh, excuse me, four-goal lead uh, allows you to do that, right? So here's a good dodge down the alley. Okay, there's, there's Palmer's first one. All right, that'll settle him down right there. That's a good stop. Palma stands tall on the near post, was able to stop Groninger, beat him for the opener. Palinetti in transition, David Mealy Estrella, defensive midfielder getting forward here. Good decision there. And he'll get off for a sub and Corey Van Genhoven to come on. Palinetti whipping around with it over to Tom Hanna X. Wayne White joins the attack. Matt Anderson and Caleb Pearson, a couple of Canadians from British Ontario and uh, or British Columbia and Ontario, <laughs> respectively, into the midfield. Here's Anderson. Oh, good look, leaked by uh, by Wayne. Feeds to White, and he tried okay. to jump it down in front of Caracciolo, and it goes behind with 32 on the timer. Yeah, I, th I think the sort of looks a little slow right now with their quick dodges. You know, you want you want to hit that ball on the first second pass and really explode uh, into your dodge and you know explode out of them. You know, uh, uh, we're kind of not sharing the ball. Oh, great. Oh, up. Oh, and they'll yep. rule that a goal. It bounces in. Van Genhoven was near it. 
It was a great feed in front, and for Stony Brook, they'll take it any way they can get it. Corey Van Genhoven, here's another look. No, absolutely, yeah. I mean, Corey's coming around the corner. I mean, excuse me, uh, uh, who's that? That's uh, uh, Pearson coming around the corner, trying to find Van Genhoven on the crease, uh, and 55 uh, rule, uh, you know, does the right thing, try to get to knock the ball down, it tips off the stick into the goal. So, you know, we'll... Uh, We'll give Luke a little pass on that one, man. Not, <laughs> not much you can do on those deflections, you know, kind of like in hockey. Sometimes you just chalk it up and you move on. But, hey, that might be the uh, the trigger to get Stony Brook's offense going, right? Um, you know, get a, get a kind of a uh, out-of-the-ordinary goal. A greasy goal, and it comes midway through the first period to make it a 4-1 game. Flags down here on the near side after a scrum off the faceoff, and we'll get the call. We've got the... Luxinger brothers as our officials today. Brian's the referee. Tim is the umpire. Mike Infantino is the field judge. A 30-second technical assessed to Renz Conlin for a holding penalty. Yeah, it was right off the faceoff there. You know, um, he, he got on top of, uh, of LaPierre, and, and he wasn't able to let it get up from it and move around. So the official thought it was a hold there. I kind of want to, like, you know, let them play there a little bit. I don't think um, it was really – you could go the other way, too. You can call um, – uh, Labier for holding. You know, he was withholding the ball from uh, from play. Um, but, hey, listen, another chance for man, uh, man up for here for Bryant, and uh, let's see what the Seawolves can do on defense. Bryant got the man up goal earlier. Mason Druin scored it. Okay, you're starting out here in a 1-3-2. You're probably going to rotate. Yep, there's your rotation out of it. Small little 1-4. Now back to the 2-3. A couple of new long poles on for Stony Brooks. Special teams unit, Christian Loud and Liam Ronan, both up at the top, 0 and 19. Good check. Penalty is up on Conlon, so David Mealy Estrella comes back to help defend. Yeah, good job there by the defense, you know. Uh, not, nothing really much to look at. They, they were able to change their shape three times, right? They won 3 2 to 1 4 to 2 3, um, and a great job by, uh, by Stony Brook's man down. Austin Kent. Plays Pat Brosnan. Groninger and now Weingarten. Feeds the middle for Bonaiuto. Long ball, sticked into the air by Ronan and now taken on the run by Christian Lau, the sophomore out of Smithtown West. Nice ground ball. Penalty marker down and Palinetti tries to scoot towards the net and it's taken away by Rule and we'll get the call here on the near side. Yeah, I believe they got McGovern on the yep. slash there, uh, you know, um, on that clear. He was trailing uh, loud, took a little swing, and, uh, you know, got him where you shouldn't. So a penalty on Logan McGovern for Bryant. It is a 60-second penalty. So Stony Brook will have an opportunity with a 60-second man advantage. Palinetti, Pakel, McCannell, DeMeo, Van Genhoven, and Hahn, the top – Special teams unit for the Seawolves. Hahn outside for Palinetti. The lefty flings it for Van Genhoven, but it's too tall. Yeah, that's a tough feed, you know, trying to, you know, you know, swing it from the, the high left all the way down to that right pipe. You know, a lot of sticks in the way. Uh, you know, hey, he's a redshirt freshman. You're going to make mistakes. You know what I mean? The player's got to play. Under five and a half to go in the first quarter. Bryant scored the first four goals of this one. Oof. Yeah, we got another flag down there. You know, Palinelli on the ride, trying to make up for the mistake. Uh, pushed the defender, but he ended up uh, pushing himself offside. So. Yeah, you know, that's a tough little set there for Dylan. Had a great weekend last weekend. You know, uh, again, you know, we tried to make a tough feed on man up. Tried to do a good job on the ride. And as part of the game, you know, he fell over on the... Uh, uh, off the midline and um, ended up uh, taking a 30-second foul for offsides. So offsides against Palinetti. It is a 30-second penalty. McGovern still has 17 seconds left to serve on his slash. So Bryant. Yeah, it's, and you well, know, it's hard, it's hard for Stony Brook to catch up if you're fouling. I mean, you know, what is this? this? This is what, their third or fourth penalty? Right here in the fourth quarter, I think Coach Galati will have a quick conversation with the boys uh, after the first quarter, though, just to settle down, relax, you know what I mean? And that could be, you know, excitement from last week, you know, trying to get a groove this week, you know. But go back to basics. Just relax, okay? Take a deep breath and play Stony Brook lacrosse. 
So it's five on five here with the uh, penalties, and then Bryant will go on a man up for a quick 15, 14 seconds, if my math is correct. Yeah, right about there, sir. Here's a whistle, and here is Trevor Weingarten, a two-time all-conference pick out of Allendale, New Jersey, one of a couple of senior captains for Bryant, although they are missing one of them in Jack Coran, who is out for injury for a second consecutive game. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, that's, that, that, uh, Brian plays very aggressive on defense. You saw that. Anytime the ball goes over that midline, they're right on top of Stony Brook's guys, not letting them get their hair freeze to play fast. McGovern's back on. they got about three seconds left for a man up. Emilia Estrella sprints in to get things on even strength. Great job by Loud. Way to get your stick in the lane, get a little nugget there, put the ball on the ground. Brosnan for Bonnie Uto. Weingarten, Austin Kent trots on as a substitute. Kevin Groninger with it on the far wing. Jukes to the outside against Dugan. Rides him on the shoulder. Groninger shreds him. And then feeds Bonayuto oh, and a nice. huge stick save. Anthony Palma. There you go. Two in a row for Palma. That, that'll get him going. Great job, man. That'll build the confidence on that defense. Uh, let's hope offensively they can put one in here for him. What a great big time save that is right on the doorstep. A big save for Anthony Palma, who had 10 of them last week against Sacred Heart. The junior out of East Islip, who won the starting gig in the offseason over Liam Daly and Kyle Hebert. And here's Corey Van Genoven, another rip and another goal. His second on the afternoon. Make it two in a row for the Seawolves. Ah, oh, beautiful. Great save on one end. You push in transition. They almost got caught on that pole, uh, jumping uh, here off the, uh, the clear. Here's a little chase. We get it to Corey, and Corey does what he does best, man. Uh, he puts it inside. Um, I'd like to see, um, you know, um, uh, Luke get a little bit tighter to that pipe, maybe squeeze that off. But, hey, give Corey a great shot. Off stick, off hip. Uh, it's 4-2. Great job by the Seawolves. So Corey Van Genoven, who had the greasy one earlier with the traffic in front, that one a lot, a lot cleaner, a lot more sweet <laughs> on the strike. Absolutely, absolutely. So two unanswered for Stony Brook after Bryant had four straight to open the game. And another faceoff. Conlon opposite La Liberty. And a hold against Conlon, so Bryant takes possession. Yeah, see, that's a tough call with the faceoff. They have to adjust. They call it a hold on why, you know, Lapia has it down, right? Conlon's trying to, you know, get underneath it and swipe it. He touches the head of the cross. They call it holding. I would like to see the rule change where you saw Nathan. He put a stick on the, on the ground holding the ball down. That should be with holding and go the other way. I think if they can take away the clamp, Sam, uh, you know, and, and hold him play, either you swipe it down the line or pull it down the line, I think it'll make the faceoffs a, a lot more uh, exciting. Of course, we've talked about it a few times already. The new face-off rules in college lacrosse for 2021. Standing neutral grip. you got to have a pronated right hand. Yep. Overhand grip on the left hand. No more motorcycle grip. You cannot withhold the ball in play. That's always been the constant. Yeah. And it's been different with refs each game. Anthony Gallardi said yeah, true. it's going to be a game-to-game, ref-to-ref. We saw some calls against Renz Conlon last week. We see the call just there. Mike Pressler, a lot of the same sentiment. You know, some guys are going to adjust as they go, but we still got to get a lot of more games under our belt to no, kind of get a, make a determination. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, we, we change our rules too often. I think, you know, it's tough for the officials to get some consistency doing that, right? I don't think Renz is doing anything there other than trying to get the ball into play. I don't think he's trying to hold. I think he's trying to, you know, uh, get Nathan stick to move so we can get the ball out, though. But you're right. Uh, the officials need some time to adjust uh, to the new rules as well. It's it's almost subjective. It's almost like a baseball umpire with balls and strikes. It's oh, a exactly. different strike zone. Yeah, exactly different right. Interpretation. Yeah, and you got three different guys on the game. You know what I mean. And they're trying to do their best to be consistent. Uh, so it, it is. And it's it's it's, an, it's it's a tough game to call across. But uh, if we can tighten up our rules and maybe slow down how often we change them, I think would give the officials a a, a great benefit to uh, to call more consistently. Last two minutes of the first quarter, Bryant leads four to two. Bulldogs got the first four. Seawolves have scored the last two. And Mike McCannell makes it three with a lefty shot that beats Caracciolo on the bottom right corner. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a save of a ball, I'm sorry, you know, in my opinion. I, and I think that, you know, Luke uh, doesn't look really balanced well. He, he looks like he's leaning. Uh, this is a nice shot by McCannell. And he you know, got to his knee, and he just threw his hands at it instead of getting his body in front of it uh, and trying to get the, you know, the best angle for a stick to get it, though. But give Mike credit. Uh, nice shot to the pipe. Mike McCannell, the senior out of Orangeville, Ontario, gets his second goal on the year. And Stony Brook, don't look now, has made this a one-goal game. They've inched back into it. 
just had to wake up a little bit. Bryant really blitzed him out of the gate. Anthony Gallardi had to take the timeout inside the first five minutes of the quarter. The faceoff, the ground ball scooped up by David Miliastrella. The wing play very key today, and Stony Brook gets a nice ground ball there. Yeah, great job by Deskowitz to tie up Nate there, you know what I mean, and, and keep the ball on the ground. Again, you know, it got kicked out, and Stony Brook was able to pick it up. The Seawolves get to go to work on offense for the final 90 seconds of the first period. Here's Wayne White. Yeah, I, I wouldn't expect Stony Brook to hold on to this. They're going to go. They, they, they want to make the tightest game as fast as possible. Anthony Gallardi wants this offense to keep the ball hot. They yeah. want to keep it moving. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he said this, I want to play fast, but I want to play smart. You know what I mean? And I think, uh, you know, in, in doing that, it's going to make it tough for Bryant. There you go. Anderson yeah. moves in and beats Caracciolo 5-hole, and we got a tie game 4-4. Yeah, that's a great job. The defender gets caught on the trail a little bit on Anderson here. If you see Wayne, uh, you know, uh, gives it across. He pulls it real back for his left hand, comes back to his right. Again, I think that went inside of uh, – of uh, Luke right there again, uh, Cassiolo. I think he's got to do a better job of holding that pipe and look at them sneak inside of it. Good, uh, give credit to, uh, to Anderson. Good shot. Well, we were talking about this last week, partner. It's a game of runs, four Absolutely. nothing and four nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is, and that's that's why way back in the day in middle school I decided to not play uh, baseball. Do was doing baseball and lacrosse. This is a much <laughs> more uh, fun sport to play. No offense to all baseball fans out there. They're always in the game, and so Stony Brook has taken the momentum here. Sixty seconds to play in the quarter. Another ground ball. There you go. And the long pole, Danny Cassidy, collects it for Stony Brook. Yes, that's two face-off wins in a row. I know it took back the it guy. It took, oh. Whistle on the field. Oh, I think we didn't get a reset on the shot clock on possession. Now. Ah, I see. I think, I think they started possession when there wasn't, and uh, they have to reset it. And now we can play yeah, ball 80. again. Full 80. Michael Sabella races forward, plays Wayne White. <laughs> Veering in. Get about 36 to go in a half here. And Brian has substituted a couple of youngsters on 32. Will Ronan, a freshman out of Rochester Hills, Michigan. Picked by Anderson. Played outside for Palinetti. And he misses wide. First shot that we've seen from Palinetti this afternoon. Yeah, great job. He, uh, you know, uh, couldn't get to his left, pulled down, you know, swung his hip open, uh, his, hip, his hips open, excuse me, uh, and took a righty. Here we go. Final 20 seconds of the first. Van Genhoven gets a screen from White, centers it for Palinetti, was looking in front for Hahn, and now the ground ball batted in the air by LeJohn Jones yeah, and played back there. to his goalie for the end of the quarter. So... Looks like we're going to come out of this one. One last shot by Ronan, who tried to take it from about 45 yards out. That is all she wrote for quarter number one. Stony Brook and Bryant knotted up at four. Bryant got the first four. And then the Seawolves rallied back for the next four. But a big thing that you saw in the first quarter there, Tim, the faceoff X. Nathan Law Liberty wins six of nine faceoffs for Bryant. Yeah, I think that's why we're tied here at four. I mean, he did a wonderful, wonderful job. Uh, there's a violation right there. Uh, Deskowitz, Oop, uh, I think that's a that's that's not a flag. That's only his first violation. That's a little mistake there by the official. But um, yeah, he went six and nine, and that's the reason why we're four. Like we said uh, early in uh, the keys, uh, you want to play blue blue collar lacrosse, right? And uh, Nathan went in the face offs and picking the ball up. A delay of game called uh, on okay. Austin Deskowitz right there, so it is a thirty second penalty. Sure. Yep. yep. I thought it was on violations, but you're right. So thirty second foul again. You know you can't let your emotions get the best of you. Just put the ball down and let the refs. Uh, uh, call the game, you know. So Deskowitz, who was almost flawless last weekend, winning 12 at 13 faceoffs, he's two for five today. And La Liberty, like you said, for Bryant, goes six of nine in the opening period. That's a big reason why the Bulldogs got their four nothing edge. Now they got to go back from scratch again, but they get a man up to start the second. Mason Druin had a goal. Jake Bonayuto. Outside for Weingarten, rears and fires, and a good stop in front by Palma. Yeah, not the greatest shot selection. That's an easy one for Anthony. You know, did a good job staying balanced, good save. Uh, another good stop on man down by the Seawolves. Here's the clearing game that we talked about for Stony Brook. That was a big thing they wanted to work on in practice, making sure they get into the other half safely, and they do with Danny Cassidy. A nice spin on Jake Fisk. Yep, Got to get someone open here. Got to get to the ball. There we go. 
Michael does a great job of getting to it too. Hey, listen, with all these penalties happening with Stony Brook, it's going to be hard for him to play fast when you're constantly in the penalty box, right? It slows down the offense. Uh, you can't get in any rhythm here. So, uh, you know, the boys have got to, you know, tighten up their uh, their game here, uh, fouling. The Cal trying to center it for DeMeo. It went out of shins. Ground ball picked up by LeJohn Jones, a freshman defender who played really well against Providence last weekend. Oh, good ride. Good ride by Tom Hahn. Working on Ryan Baker, a junior out of Draper, Utah. LeJohn Jones able to carry forward and gain the zone for Bryant. Long pole gives it up to McGovern so he yeah, can sub out. Just in time, man. That 60-second <laughs> clock was right there. You know, it's 20 seconds to get it over the midline, and uh, that was at 61 as soon as uh, LeJohn stepped over. It was close. That's the tempo that Bryant wants. They're already deep into this shot clock, 40 seconds to shoot. They're trying to eat up possession and dictate the rhythm of this game. Here's Groninger with a head of steam. McGovern. Doubled up by Sabella and Melia Estrella, and it forces a bad pass outside for Groninger. Hustled by Tom Dugan to get the ground ball. He's got it and secures on the transition. He's got Devin O'Leary to his left. The oh, long pole wanted another one. He had it last week, but wasn't able to handle it. And here comes Bryant. Yeah, hey, that's a chance to take, right? They want to play fast. They uh, want to play smart. I don't know if, uh, you know, that's a good smart, cause it's a good decision trying to. Oh, oh wow, what a goal down end. low. Yeah. Ben Abladian gets Bryant back in front. Yeah. The freshman <laughs> on the transition feed. Bonayuto the assist, and Bryant takes the lead back. Hey, yeah, there's a little bit of Bryant taking a little bit of Stony Brook's play, right? They get a turnover. You know, Devin made it not a great decision of holding on to it there. They turned the ball over, play fast, bang, we're 5 4. Ben Abladian, a freshman out of Bishop Guerin High School in Londonderry, New Hampshire. He had a goal last week in his debut start. He gets a goal here to get Bryant one up again. And Mike Pressler talked about it with us in our production call earlier in the week. They want to find new ways to score on offense. you got to find a way to get a one off a turnover, off the ride, or off the face-off. And they've done both of that today, off the face-off and in transition. No, they have. They have. You know, they're, 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 playing, you know, they're playing their game, right? They're playing, you know, time of possession, short and up, blue-collar lacrosse. And then when they have the opportunity to push and play fast, hey, they made Stony Brook play. Give them credit. Another penalty marker. Let's get the call here. It looks like a push against Bryant. They're going to get John Miller. Or excuse me, Nathan La Liberty called. A 30-second foul and a man-up opportunity for Stony Brook to try and equalize. Yeah, that was a little bit of a late flag. I think the ref really wanted to take a good look at that and make sure he got it right. So Stony Brook special teams only went one for four against Sacred Heart. Let's see what they can do here. Yeah, look at wow! Look how far uh, Bryant's going to extend out. You know, especially on a thirty-second foul. You know that that time is your favor as the clock runs, as they move the ball on the outside, not taking shots, you're going to shorten up that penalty time pretty quick. Last second on the penalty, even strength, and DeMeo with a save on the other end by Caracciolo. Yeah, you know, I, I you know, uh, the penalty is up there. I think, you know, uh, sometimes in this game the ball is more valuable than the play. Not a great shot by Matt, um, you know. Seals so move forward. Van Genhoven already has two. Pakel out top. Met by Zach Coffey, one of the better long poles for Bryant. DeMeo. Working on Kemble, the captain. Pestered out by Coffey. McCannell in the middle for Pakel, who let one fly, and it went up over the bar. Uh, it looks like Bryant gets possession. Wow, that's a great job by Rule. You know, the shoulder, shoulder shot come over the top of the goal. He, he beelined it to the end line and uh, first got it the ball where it went out. Gets possession. Bench loved it. And Bryant gets it back, leading 5-4. to four. Ben Abladian's goal puts the Bulldogs back in front. Yeah, Sam, I think something to take notice of. I think, you know, you know the Stony Brook there, the ball's kind of dying there, sticks a little bit. It, it doesn't look like last week where, you know, they were really snapping the ball out, sharing a little bit, trying to catch uh, uh, Bryant uh, in a bad mismatch. It has not been hot. The Seawolves 
uh, take over here after Bryant flips possession. Flag flies in. They might get Bryant on a sub right there. Yeah, yep. Caleb Pearson rearing out to his left. Corey Van Genhoven. Yeah, and you know when you when you when you when a lot of flags are flying, it it, it breaks up rhythm. And I think this the, the the flags being down and the slow down really helps Bryant. You know, it's uh you know uh, you can't get in a rhythm. It's tough to get rhythm offensively, and obviously you're playing a, a ton of defense being um in the box so much. You know, so I, I think this uh is a tough way for Stony Brook that want to play fast. Um, Bodied up by Caracciolo on the close shot by Anderson. Yeah, and then we have the. The met up uh, situation coming on right now, but you know, so I think it favors. Like my point is, my I think I think Bryant is enjoying where they are right now. They, they can't be uh, uh, more happy than to be up uh, by a goal uh, at about nine minutes ago in the um, uh, a little excuse me, a little under ten minutes ago in the uh, in the in the Ryan half. Foul on Ryan Dabrinsky called for the foul, an illegal procedure call, which makes it a thirty-second penalty. Stony Brook back on the man up. Didn't get anything last time, and as you noted, Tim sacrificed possession there instead of the power play, and it ended up kind of biting him in the foot. Yep. Biting him in the back, I should say. DeMeo with it out top. Piquel playing behind the goal. Normally they have Han there, and here he is right now, Chris Piquel Jr. Mike McCannell slashed away by Fisk. Palinetti down low for Han, goal line extended. Good luck. Penalty is up. Hey, give Brian credit. That man down, they're being aggressive on man down on the ball, which makes it really tough to feed, right? Really tough to make clean exchanges to find that, you know, two on one or three on two on the backside. You know, good, uh, great job on uh, on Brian's defensive coordinator's part of it. I mean, very aggressive on man down. I like it. Han rolls opposite of the screen. Now he spins back that way. Here's DeMeo. Pressed out by Kimball. Van Genhoven scoots it to the near side. Palinetti trying to get something going. He's only got one shot today. Van Genhoven on a switch. Well defended by Kimball. And the shot goes wide. Yeah, tough. I know, I know Corey wants to get us tied here, but, you know, let's <laughs> – I think we want a better shot selection than that. 51 seconds on the shot clock. Play restarts with Tom Hahn. Leading goal scorer on this Stony Brook club career-wise. Outside for Palinetti. Shot hit traffic on the way in. And Bryant's got possession. Emmett Kemble was closest. Yeah, I don't know that uh, slot, uh, slot selection is very good right now. I think that they're, they're pressing too much to tie the game. Uh, just said, let it come to you. You know what I mean? It's another tough shot there by Palinelli. Tough one by Corey uh, before that. You know, it, uh, it, it, it's a tale of two games, right? Last week it was uh, fast and furious. Now it seems like uh, we're pressing a little bit here. Um, but uh, they'll get them settled down, you know. It's, uh, it's adjustments, right? You know, what staff can make the adjustments better uh, usually ends up winning the game. And Bryant has the upper hand, five to four. Trevor Weingarten moves in, feeds it in front. Abladian, easy finish. Ben Abladian doubles up, and Bryant goes up six to four. Yeah, you know, you had a good dodge there right here, okay? <laughs> Excuse me, you see Sabella come on the slide. There's no two slot in the backside there. I think Cassidy uh, a little too far out. He should be the two man coming to, uh, to get to the backside there, and that's. Um, a really, really good look and a really good finish. You know, um, you got to make that adjustment. You got the one side come, great job. Two side, Danny's too far away to get that back to the crease, and uh, we're up 6 4. Back to the faceoff X. Conlin opposite La Liberty, a scrapper versus a technician in La Liberty who wins another draw. The freshman out of Auburn, New Hampshire, top rated faceoff recruit in the country, has done his job for Bryant, sure and it's has. a 6 4 game. You look at this Bulldogs program. Under Mike Pressler, they have developed into a contender in the Northeast Conference. They'll be battling the likes of Hobart to try and win that conference championship this year and get back to another NCAA tournament. Their last one was in 2017. They yeah. made five in a row, 2012 to 16, uh, or, or 
excuse me, there, five of six from 2012 to 17. And yep. in the end, this is a program with great facilities. They love the indoor they've got up there that's only a few years old. Their locker room rivals the New England Patriots, no according doubt. to Coach Pressler. <laughs> they got the chrome helmets today. They're looking good, and they're in front six to four. No, absolutely. You know, and they're playing a lot of freshmen. So as this season goes on, that confidence builds, the wins build, and anytime you're in a, uh, a tough situation with those young guys, their experience to get now will help them through conference play. And that's another thing that Coach Pressler told us. He said, you don't want to run your elite ponies into the ground. Great, great save. Huge save, Anthony Palma lunging at it and able to clear it away. Uh, listen, Anthony's doing his job on that end of the field. You know, I, I mean, we got we got to get a balance on the other side. You know, we got to be poised on offense. You know, that's a big-time save, a wide-open cut down the middle. Anthony does a great job of getting his body to it um, and keeping it a two-goal game. Maybe it juices up Stony Brook here. Approaching six minutes to go in the half. Bryant scored the first four goals of the game. Stony Brook closed the quarter with four goals. And now Bryant with two unanswered to start the second quarter. Pellinetti jabbed at from behind by Baker. And a whistle before he could move in for the shot. And Coach Galati took a timeout there. Wasn't willing to risk the turnover right there. Hey, this is a great matchup to look. You've got Rule, a freshman, 55 for Bryant uh, against Palinetti right there. And he's doing his job. And that's a great double by 20. Uh, to try to put the ball on the ground. But Coach Galati gets a timeout there. Timeout at Laval Stadium. That is it for Stony Brook. They have used all their timeouts for the half. We'll take one with them. Burst it on the scene last weekend with six goals against Sacred Heart. It's a different story today, though. Brian has kept him in check. Yeah, you know, he's got one one, one shot and two turnovers here. Uh, you know, uh, I, I, it's it's tough for a young freshman, a redshirt, I should say, uh, to come in and try to, you know, be the guy all the time. So maybe he's pressing a little bit, though. But he's got, you know, the rest of this half and another 30 minutes to relax and uh, change that tide. So Stony Brook just spent their last time out of the half. And the Seawolves trail by two. Back-to-back -back goals from Ben Abladian for Bryant, giving the Bulldogs a 6-4 edge. Wayne White off the screen from Matt Anderson. Offensive midfield heavy here with White, Anderson, and Pearson. Last two are Canadians. Palinetti, Hahn, and Vangenhoven, the top attack line for the Seawolves. There's that freshman matchup you talked about, Tim. Brody Rule. Early double. Tough feed there. You know, 20 seconds in the, uh, left in the shot clock. Palinetti was looking for Hahn in front. Instead, Bryant races down the other way. Ryan Baker, the long pole, is forward. Logan McGovern had a goal earlier, and he spins on Michael Sabella. Great check. A good check by the sophomore out of Mount Sinai, and a turnover caused for the Seawolves. Danny Cassidy, the long pole, trying to clear it. And he does for Wayne White. Wayne White, interesting case for the senior out of Huntington, New York. He only can practice two days a week because... The other two days, he's doing his grad school work. So Monday and Wednesday, he's in the classroom. Tuesday, Thursday, he's with the team. Veteran player for this Stony Brook club who wants to pursue nursing once he gets his graduate year done here. Yeah, Wayne's a great kid. I mean, you know, that's a special player that's able to only make practice two days a week, three days a week at times and, uh, and still be in the lineup, you know. But he's a workhorse. He works hard. He's a very bright guy. Uh, I'm not surprised that he's able to, to, to stay where he is on the offensive set here. The Palinetti shot went wide, so Stony Brook resets. Here's the shot coming, Palinetti, if he can get it up. And close out by Rule. Good job by Rule. That freshman versus freshman matchup. Palinetti for Stony Brook and Brody Rule for Bryant, who is out of Lone Tree, Colorado, at a Highlands Ranch High School. One of a few young defenders that Bryant features in their top unit. Listen, he's a starting freshman from a not traditional hotbed part of the United States. Oh, great move. The slot home by Matt Anderson. Great job by Anderson taking advantage of that, right? Ball got swung over. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, he saw that there was no slide in the middle, re-attacked the middle of the field, and was able to bury it. Here you go. It's a good look of him getting his hands free. No help inside. Uh, Fiscal got a little stretch there. Uh, so great job by... Uh, by Anderson to recognize the opening and take advantage. Matt Anderson's second goal of the afternoon. And the junior out of Canada, one of seven Canadians on the Stony Brook roster, gets his third goal overall on the season. 
We're back to a one-goal game. 4.06 to play in the half, and another face-off. Conlon versus La Liberty, and he scrapes it out of there. I mean, this kid has had a heck of a day at the unbelievable, office. Unbelievable, unbelievable. You know, he's, uh, you know, it's a goal on your end. He's able to get the ball back for you right away. You know, uh, tremendous, tremendous effort so far in this game. Advantage Bryant at the face-off X. Bulldogs looking to answer. Mason Balch, limited action so far today. Logan McGovern matched up with Sabella, the long pole. A little big little here. Try to get the matchup. They don't get the switch. Sabella does a good job. Oh, great. McGovern great off the dodge, there. and he frees himself up for his second of the day. Did yeah, not take long for the Bulldogs, 7-5. No, not at all. On the initial dodge, you saw a little big little as shorty come to try and get that pick slip. It didn't work. Logan does a great job of taking off. Turning the quarter, you know, uh, Sabella ends up on the trail a little bit. Uh, Logan does a great job of, of swinging his hips around, getting his body around, and burying it in the top corner. Great shot. Bryant with another hit back, and it's Logan McGovern, the redshirt freshman from the Darien Blue Wave in Connecticut. He actually <laughs> is one of a few fre people with uh, freshman eligibility who's playing in their third year. A tie up on the draw, and La Liberty eventually takes it away. Okay, yeah. A violation the, called. Take yeah, it away, my yeah, friend. Sorry, yeah, sorry, uh, yeah. It got caught. La Liberty got caught with the ball in the back of his stick. That's a violation. You can't do it. He tried to pop it out. No good. Uh, that's a violation. Ball to the Seawolves. So the first blemish for La Liberty here in the faceoff X. And Stony Brook will go to work. But let me finish up that thought on McGovern. One of a few freshmen who actually have freshman, redshirt freshman eligibility in their third year. He got injured in 2019. COVID cut the season short in 2020. And so here he is in 2021, third year of the program as a redshirt freshman. DeMeo outside, hits it on the bottom corner. Matt DeMeo, quick hit back for Stony Brook. Yeah, that's that nice low to low we had last week. Uh, we had a penalty cutting up um, on uh, Pakel, got uh, a little chop from behind. He swings away, does a good job of finding DeMeo here. DeMeo, hands free. Again, does a good job of hiding his stick behind him. Behind him. Uh, goalie can't see it to the last minute, and a good low to low. So Matt DeMeo gets his fourth goal of the season, and he makes it a 7-6 to six ball game, but 2.49 to go in the first half. We are in a punch, count of punch game. Yes, right sir. <laughs> four goals for Bryant to start, four goals for Stony Brook to answer, two goals for Bryant to start the second quarter. Stony Brook gets one back, Bryant gets one back, and then you just saw DeMeo get the last one for the Seawolves. Oh, yeah, unfortunately. Another penalty, and it has been a flag-heavy game. Yeah, Deskowitz, uh, he jumped the gun there a little bit. That's their third violation. So now every time they violate on the faceoff, it'll be a 30-second foul for Bryant. Uh, tough situation to be in. It's short here in the first half, 2.49 to go. Uh, but you don't want to, you know, you don't put anybody on man up, to be honest with you. And if you, you didn't see it there on the camera, but Anthony Gallardi comes over to Deskowitz's faceoff man and says, hey, we're with you, we got you. Yeah. It's just one of those things where you're going to have to bear with it. So no it's just it's just a, a kid might try to, uh, you know, a uh, guy trying to make a play, get his team the advantage a little bit. You can't, you know, as a head coach, that's a great job by Anthony. He's such a, a player's coach. Knows that the, the balance between when to put it on him and, uh, you know, when to give a pat on the back. So uh, I'm not surprised by a coach showing that uh, uh, to Deskowitz. You know, keep his head up and keep battling. Got a long way to go here. Meanwhile, Bryant man up for 10 more seconds. McGovern. Way outside for Weingarten. Feeds in front. Groninger unable to connect with it. And Palma now will try and get it out of his own end. Tom Dugan, one of five senior captains for Stony Brook, racing on the far sideline. Waiting job. for some help. Wayne White subs in. Yeah, Dugan, a great job right there. Tough feed to that lower pipe by Bryant. Uh, Stony Brook's able to, you know, get the ball back, kill the penalty, and uh, let's see if they can tie this one up. Last two minutes of the half. No timeouts left for Stody Brook. Anthony Gallardi will watch his team play. Matt Anderson with two goals this afternoon. Corey Vangenhoven, two goals as well to lead the Seawolves. Yeah, no doubt. I think, you know, let's see if Stony can play with a little patience, a little poise here, you know, work for the best shot, not the first shot. And, you know, you know again, letting Dylan do his thing. He comes across the top. Uh, uh, thank God Stony was able to get the ball back right there. But, hey. He's a freshman left, and you can let it go. Trying to make a play, you got to live with it. Under 40 to shoot. Haven't really seen Stony Brook 
put together that long possession, that snappy, crisp possession yeah, that we exactly. saw yep. against Sacred Heart last Saturday. Definitely, definitely. They end oh. the half on a high note with Han being pestered by Baker. Yeah, I'm seeing here, like, you know, uh, Bryant's really quick to double, uh, especially on the backside. When that Dodger uh, gets below uh, that extra defender, he's going to swing around his back and try and double the ball there. If Sternberg could just snap that ball forward, right, get it going that direction, swing it to the backside, you're going to have open looks. They're just not crisp with, with getting it, you know, forward into the backside as fast as they can, you know, and trying to take advantage of that backside double that Bryant's trying to take it, you know, trying to get the ball on the ground there. Meanwhile, in all that scrum, a slash called against Bryant. Jake Fisk is the man. It is a one-minute penalty, so Stony Brook gets to wrap up the half with a man-up advantage. Yeah, well, let's see here. You know, they want to be patient uh, and use most of the minute up and then you know, bury it and uh, tie it at seven going to the half, or will they play fast right away? We'll see. But watch uh, Bryant's defense being very aggressive on the ball, especially when Stony Brook changes their shape on man-up. A one-minute penalty, six-second difference between the penalty timer and the game clock. It's Palinetti, Han, Pikel, Vangenhoven, and DeMeo, and he hits. Woo. Matt DeMeo back to back. The yeah. lefty buries it again. And the Seawolves use special teams and knotted up at seven heading into the half. No, that is a great look by Palinetti. He sees the big lane going through, taking advantage of Bryant's aggressiveness. And Matt, that low, low shot to that low triangle. Hey, listen, that's a tough save to make, you know? But uh, great look, uh, freshman. To the, uh, to the grad student uh, with time <laughs> at seven. <laughs> Matt DeVeo is getting his graduate degree in higher education. A good look by Stony Brook, and we're tied at a touchdown apiece. Seven to seven, 48 seconds to go in the half. I see if Bryant maybe can win this faceoff here and get something quick to potentially go in. Huge tie-up between La Liberty and Conlon. And another flag. Bryant Bench fired up. Looks like they're going to get Stony Brook again. Yeah, if you see that, it looks like uh, Colin just wanted to swing his arm underneath and try and scoop that ball out. In the process, he gets his arm caught. Again, it's a tough thing. Is 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 uh, is, is that being withheld by Bryant or, uh, or is Stony Brook trying to hold him? You know, until we get clear on that initial clamp offensive, I'm assuming faceoff wise, uh, it could be tough there. But hey, you know, like I said, each ref and crew has a different style of calling the game. Um, within the rules of interpretation. So uh, it's a man up here, which is a tough one. 43 to go, 30-second foul on, uh, on Sternberg for another face-off violation. Bryant goes man up to close out the half. It's on Conlin again. Yeah, watch them change this, right? 1-3-2, right? They leak out to the 1-4, 2-3 uh, as he steps in. Watch that backside pipe look. McGovern for Weingarten. Back to McGovern. Pat Brosnan, now Jake Bonayuto. Inside for Drew and it is saved by Palma. Ball's loose and it's oh, Liam Ronan dancing out of there. there. Great job, we've got to push, we got seven left to go here. Gonna play fast. Five seconds to play in the half. Crossing oh. feed for Pelinetti, but he wasn't able to handle it. And that is how the half comes to a close here at Laval Stadium. All tied up at seven. Good ball game. No, oh, absolutely. Great save by Palmer. They tried to play fast there. Uh, Australia with, with, with a tough tough pass to Polinetti. Hopefully he connected that. Maybe we get a, to 8 7 oh, But what a great first half. A great first half indeed. Stony Brook 7, Bryant 7. We'll be back in just a moment on LSN. Stony Brook are all tied up at seven. Sam Niederman, Tim Tuttle, Christopher Lizio is our director today and our entire Great uh, crew here at Laval. Let's take a look at some of the first half stats here, uh, Tim. The, the face-off X was the main thing. 11 out of 16 in favor of Bryant. Uh, Stony Brook only winning five face-offs. And then a lot of penalties called in that opening half as well. A lot of EMOs. Bryant only goes one of six on the man up. Stony Brook one of four. Yeah, I think that's what they want to try and clean that up a little bit. You want to take advantage of your, your, your opponent when he fouls. Uh, but like I said, I mean, that face-off effects is, is what's really, you know, keeping Bryant in it. Uh, hopefully uh, Coach makes some adjustments on that, and uh, uh, we'll get Stony Brook to, uh, the, uh, the win here. So you see Bryant there getting uh, – out onto the field first. Noted it. They were warming up the entire time. Did not go back into the locker room. Kind of a road mentality for Mike Pressler's Bulldogs who come in here trying to make it back-to-back -back wins. They did beat Providence in their opener last Saturday. And Mike Pressler described that one as 
one of the most emotional days and crazy days he's had in 38 years of coaching for an individual game, just getting back out there after an 11th month break, seeing their team play for the first time, it was incredible, and they were able to get that one out. They'll try and see if they can win this one on the road here. Second half in the faceoff X, Nathan La Liberty, the freshman, dueling with Renz Conlin, and a whistle with a push from behind, and it's going to go against Stony Brook, so Bryant gets another win and another possession to start the second half. Yeah, going to get some stops on D here. Emmett Kimball playing with the short stick. Captain will come off and rotate back. Trevor Weingarten comes on. And here's Kevin Groninger who had the opening goal in the first period. This is a Bryant team that has had to deal with COVID just like any other team yeah. this season. But it's interesting the way they've had to handle it. Last week was their first time going full field in a year. They didn't even get to go full field in practice in the fall because of COVID rules. Yeah, and it's amazing how well they're playing here. And I know Coach Presser was really worried about the, 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 the guys, you know, mental well-being and getting back on the field and how important that is. Uh, so it's, it's extremely impressive to see how well they're playing today. Uh, and like you said, not being able to full field uh, at times, uh, they look good. They've had as many or as little as 18 players dressed for practice. It's a day-to-day -day thing. Everybody's having to adjust. As McGovern feeds Groninger in front, got knocked down by Tom Dugan. Yeah, great job by Dugan to you know, get to that back pipe, okay, crash the back pipe as we like to call it, right? And, uh, you know, give a little tap. Uh, the, the exchange is not clean and no shot. Yeah, uh, uh, Brian here in his own ride, making it difficult to, uh, difficult for, excuse me, for uh, Sorbonne to clear it. C.J. Trankel is forward oh, and a long pole yeah. with a long run, but eventually knocked away by Jake Fisk. Yeah, these are not the turnovers we saw last week, Sam, at all by Stony Brook. You know, they played much cleaner and much smarter. I think you want to pull it out there, possess, uh, uh, you know, and, uh, hey, there's attackmen. They're going to do a better job of V cutting in and out uh, to get open to get the ball from their long pole there. You know, Dylan and, and Corey on this side, on when you're on those outside attackmen, you got to break up and out uh, uh, to make those V cuts to get open, uh, to give some uh, pressure relief to your long pole, bringing the ball over. Everything was going right for Stony Brook in the comfortable 20-8 to win against Sacred Heart last week. Seawolves have turned it over now six times today. Chris Piquel trying to dive <laughs> for it and said Pat Brosnan is going to win possession for Bryant. Bulldogs will try and get it out of their own end. Logan McGovern pressed by Michael Sabella. Good luck. Nope, not clear. She had a good, a good ground ball here by Dugan. Uh, great job. Way to find some space. Uh, use your stick and your uh, uh, throw it to the sideline. Move your feet. Create some space for yourself. Let's get a clean clear here. There we go. And it is a clean clear. Matt DeMeo. Mike McCannell moving in with space. Stutters it back to DeMeo. It's an interesting Stony Brook trying to change up their offensive sets a little bit just yeah. in, in terms of the different looks. Anthony Gallardi and Mike Chanichuk maybe going back to the drawing board in the half to see if they can find some freer looks at goal. Yeah, they're trying to play the two-man game up top. You know, dodge over the top, throw back. Uh, they're just not clean today, you know. I gotta be honest with you, Sam. I mean, they're, they're, you know, those those simple exchanges they had last week are not clicking right now, and the turnovers, uh, you know, uh, is what's uh, uh, hurt, you know hurting them from putting the ball in the goal. Quite honest with you, you know. I mean, uh, I don't know if it's because um, you know the uh, the big win. Uh, I think it's come easy today, but you gotta work. You gotta work hard for every goal. Uh, you gotta work hard for every stop. Meanwhile, Bryant looking to. Secure another lead. Stony Brook was able to tie it up at the end of the half. Yeah, I mean, no, no turnover was good, you know, Sam, but you see those unforced turnovers, especially on the offensive side with your best stick handlers, your best ball handlers. Uh, as a coach, those are, you know, you bite your lip uh, sometimes on those. Bonayuto goes in against Cassidy. A couple of Long Island kids dueling here. Cassidy out of shore and waiting river. And Bonayuto, a former Miller Place Panther. Yeah, right down the block. Ben Ablady and the freshman spins against Loud and tried to hook it onto the far pipe there. Would have been a hat-trick goal. Instead, he's denied. 
Cassidy clears it out. Amelia Estrella galloping forward. Jimmy Morell is forward. So is a long pole. Christian Loud who's calling for it. And Dylan Pellinetti sprayed out wide by Brody Rule. That freshman on freshman matchup we've been keeping an eye on. Yeah, and you got to give it to Rule so far. You know, he's keeping uh, Dylan quiet today so far. And again, it's never really just on Dylan, right? It's, it's the whole offense clicking, uh, two man game, and, you know, uh, create some matchups, create some breakdowns on the defense, and see if we can uh, put the ball and go. Here's that two man game, you know, they're playing from the high wings. <coughs> Crossover to throw back, but you see the help position. Good rotation there uh, by Bryant. You know, they changed their matchups there, but they, they're willing to, to rotate, change their maps, uh, map matchups of who they're playing uh, to stop the Seawolves, slow them down offensively. And White up top, veteran working against the freshman, Will Ronan. Rolls it back for Pellinetti. Extra pass for Pearson. Denied by Caracciolo, who is able to spray towards it. Yeah, good save there. Luke Caracciolo, who had... 16, sa or 16 saves against Providence, yep. 18 saves against Stony Brook a year ago. He's done just enough today. Yeah, you know, and I, I think, uh, you know, Caleb could have used a little more poise there on his shot selection. Kind of took a quick, you know, uh, not a great shot. You know, it's, a, it's an overhand bounce shot right to the middle of the goal. You want to challenge um, uh, Luke a little bit better than that. Jake Bonayuto spins it back. Abladian playing at X. I'll tell you, I'm really impressed with Ovladi and McGovern and uh, Bonanito's. They, they, their, their speed is unbelievable. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They change the direction. They've looked good. And remember, they're doing it without Marco Rourke, who was yeah. the best player on the field in last season's matchup between these two teams. Oh, wow. And if they're able to get him back anytime soon, you know, how deadly would that attack to be to have four guys who can really play? White outside for Dylan Palinetti. Nothing doing to start the third quarter. Approaching eight and a half minutes to go. Yeah, no real flow on offense for either team, right? A, a couple unforced turnovers, you know, uh, still feeling each other out. Hey, it's also 30 degrees out here too, people. Let's not <laughs> I, was, I was about to say, it is chilly, it's cold, it's brutal right no, now. No doubt, I think if I put my jacket on, you know, 30 <laughs> seconds into the game. <laughs> no, we got the windows up. Here in the broadcast booth, so we're, we're barren in the elements. Pellinetti shoots and misses. Yeah, just not hitting the target so far yet today. He was hitting everything against Sacred Heart. Of six goals, he could not miss. Wow, these Bryant defenders on every shot, they're getting to the end line. I mean, yeah. it's like they anticipate it, which is a great thing. Hey, there's only three possibilities, right? It, it's shot, it goes in the goal, goalie makes a save, or it goes off the end line. So they're taking that risk of getting to the end line there. Uh, that's got to be like at least four or five times that Bryant has beaten Stony Brook to the mm. end line. You know, and that's a great job on the turnovers there. You know, that helps you get, you know, get the ball back on yep. offense, you know. I, I was going to say, as a result, the Bulldogs get another possession, another where they can, you know, slow it down in the half court, so to speak. Yeah. And, and, and dictate the pace of this game. Mason Balch back to McGovern, who's got two. Fakes the pass behind the net and then plays it out for Brosnan. Jake Bonayuto. David Melia Estrella with him step for step, back for Balch. Good rotation. Good check. And a nice check. Uh, Trinkle and Cassidy trying to screw it loose. Great and they job. do. And a long pull. Christian Loud gains the attacking half. He's got options. And he'll shoot it right down uh, Broadway there. And it goes right behind the net. All right, hey, listen, yep. you know, uh, Bryant decided not to rotate to get in the triangle and, and, and stop the, the long pull. You got to let it ride there. Christian Loud coming down. I mean, you don't get too many of those opportunities. He was coming in like a freight train yeah, there. Listen, almost. Like we said, you don't score on 100% of the shots. You don't take. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Here's Wayne White, oh. and White's got the goal. There you go. Great Wayne job by Wayne. Wayne White, his first of the season, and it gives Stony Brook their first lead of the day. Take another look. Yeah, uh, Wayne, great hitch right there. Gets to the middle of the field. Good low to low. Hey, that low to low is, is really getting to uh, to Luke, man. I mean, I mean, I don't even get to that's a stick side low shot that he gets to, but it seems like he's going to his knees a little bit, anticipating the low. But great shot by Wayne. Wayne White, the redshirt senior, 
out of John Glenn High School in Huntington, New York, gets his 31st career goal, his first of 2021. There you go. And, hey, the first lead for the Soyuz, right? Yep. Advantage, Stony Brook, 8-7. After a quiet start to the second half, Stony Brook goes up by a goal, and now we're back to the faceoff X. Conlin against Nathan La Liberty. And La Liberty scoops it out of there, but the ground ball taken by David Meliastrella. The underrated aspect of the faceoff is the wing play as Brian eventually collects it on the run. Zach Coffey can move in, and, and it's uh, picked off in traffic by Devin O'Leary. <laughs> yeah, he ran Hard to, to a find it for a second. <laughs> no doubt. He went to a hornet's nest right there. I mean, that's a great <laughs> job on the ride. I mean, Stony Brook, everybody got onto Coffey. You know, they're like, well, we're not going to let you score today, buddy. But uh, that's a great job by Stony Brook. An unforced turnover here, too. But, hey, next play. Coffee had a goal last week off the ground against Providence. He was really good off the ground. Yeah, I tell you, him and Fest do a great, great job. 63 and 48 for Brian. I mean, uh, Coach Presley said during the week we talked to him, those are probably two of the long poles he feels are one of the best in the country, and uh, they're showing it today. They are all over the field. A restart play here with Trevor Weingarten, the two-time all-conference captain from Bergen Catholic High School in New Jersey. Opposite Devin O'Leary. Screen from McGovern. Weingarten still with it. Austin Kent. Weingarten runs into a double. Plays it back out. Groninger. It's off the crossbar. They That's a shot still. That's a shot still. That goes White. Oh, great call by the official. Wow. Good job by Corey Vagenhoven. Regardless of where the ball goes out. Off the crossbar, and you'll get, I mean, that, that just shows you how hard they're ripping it, right? Uh, went off the crossbar over the 50-yard line. Yeah, it came all the way <laughs> out to midfield, and Corey Van Genhoven had the wherewithal and hustle to get there first, so Stony Brook gets the ball. Yeah, exactly. You know, Corey was the first one to where the ball went out. Stony Brook ball. Less than five and a half to go in the third quarter. Yeah, he's had a quiet today, a day today, too. Tommy Hahn, too. You know, I'd like to see Tommy uh, maybe be a little bit of an igniter here. You know, get a uh, uh, senior leader. You know, uh, maybe they can run. But I see Coach Shannon Chuck and Coach Galati want to run that two-man game from the high wings. Uh, maybe change it up a little bit. Maybe let Tommy have a few runs at it. Oh, dangerous. This guy's hands free. Oh, Inside, nice. and Mike McCannell charges it home. Mike McCannell's second goal of the day. Two unanswered for Stony Brook to start the third quarter. 9-7 Seawolves. Yeah, great job here by Chris Piquel to get his hands free. He was tied up with the defender as he came across. Um, the slide came. He was able to find McCannell right in the middle. Uh, here we go with Chris. Uh, we get that rolling, boys. Great, thanks. So here you go, Chris. He's hard dodge, right? Leans in a little bit. There's the lift by Fisk. Uh, good look here to McCannell. Good, uh, great. In his stick, out of his stick, in the goal. Great setup, great finish. Mike McCannell. His second of the day, and now Stony Brook has picked and choose their spots, and they found a way to get back in front. La Liberty off the faceoff. Bryant with some work to do. They trail it by their most today. Might be playing a little five-on-five five here. Oh, La Liberty, okay, La Liberty and uh, Colin, they're coming to the, to the box now, though. Sometimes teams like to do that. They keep their faceoff guys on, put a little five-on-five, five, change it up a little bit. couple of uh, personnel, second-tier midfielders uh, come in to join the attack. Ryan Dobrinsky along with Aiden Goltz. Dobrinsky, a freshman from West Greenwich, Rhode Island, and Goltz out of Newport Beach, California, also a rookie. Here's another one who's had a great Let's day. Save. A lady and big stop by Palma. Rebound comes out for Goltz. Ground ball bouncing in traffic. Gold still centering pass for Dubrinsky, who hits it on the weak side. Nice look there, and Bryant gets a quick one back. Yeah, that's a little unfortunate. Tony did a great job on defense, putting the ball on the ground. Um, everyone gets to the ball. Then you also got one, two, three, four, yep. five Stonebrook guys. Bryant's able to pick it up, and uh, it, listen, you know, that's a tough one for Palmer. He's not going to be able to stop those too many one-on-one -on -one the doorstep, though. But, hey, great effort by, uh, by Stonebrook. You know, you're doing everything right. Ball just about bounce your way right there. Just a little bit of a leak out. And Dabrinsky <laughs> gets the goal to make it 9-8. to eight. Mike Pressler dips into the depth chart there. Both players involved on that little goal after the uh, loose ball. Dabrinsky and Goltz, second and third tier midfielders. He talked about it. He wants to play about nine deep in the midfield, especially in the third quarter. Then he'll let his number one guys go in the fourth. But he wants to save those legs 
uh, for April and May. You don't want to exhaust them in February and March. No doubt. And, and you saw that. I caught them up early before the game started, Sam. They brought 40 guys with them on this trip traveling, which shows to tell you that Coach Presser wants to run those those guys at an even keel and have some fresh legs you know, leading into the you know, second half and the fourth quarter. So we got a good ball game. 3.40 to go in the third. 9-8 Stony Brook. Right now, McCannell's goal is the difference. But Dabrinsky gets one back for Bryant. See that early slide coming. You see two to the ball. Tommy holds on to it along. Get that ball out of your stick, man. Get it to the backside fast to try and take advantage of that mismatch. You know, uh, Bryant's doing a great job. They're trying to catch the double. They're coming early. Uh, the throw forward here. So you got three on that one side against one. And then it's dying on that second pass. You know, it's. Uh, I think Coach will make that, the, after watching the film this week, make that adjustment. You know, you want to create that defense, uh, excuse me, offense, create the defense to start. Here's three to the ball, and we hold on to it. Pearson eventually gets rid of it for Palinetti. Matched up with Rule. Palinetti spinning oh. and scoring. Dylan Palinetti finally. There you go. Good job by Palinetti here. A uh, little one-on-one uh, -on -one individual effort. <clears throat> I, th I think they get a switch matchup. I think a shorty went on him. We'll check it on the replay really quick. Uh, no, it was against Rule. Rule ends up on the trail a little bit, and Dylan did a great job. Turning the corner, you know, getting his hips around, uh, burying it. So Palinetti scores his seventh on the year, first of the afternoon. Stony Brook goes up by two again with less than three to go in the third quarter. Yeah, like I said, it's a, it's a punch counter punch game, right? Seawolves on the uh, the winning side right now, up by two, but it's good to see and good for Dylan, man. Way to you know you want to you want to break that uh, that streak. Another face off. Austin Deskowitz checks in for Stony Brook. Law Liberty has taken every draw for Bryant. And See, that was a great job by Deskowitz right there. Uh, the server's going to come up with the ball, but he kind of let La Liberty win the face off. He got a good check on his elbow, balls on the ground, a chance for us to pick it up. We just didn't do it. Zach Coffey running in off the ground. He shoots it behind. <laughs> <laughs> well, he loves that. He, that long ball, he loves to get out and run, doesn't he? No, no doubt, no doubt. Hey, listen, he's playing a great game today. Why not put one on the board, get your, your team to 10-9, to and who knows from here. Screen from Weingarten, Groninger, whose dad, Tim, was a All-America at the University of Virginia in 1991. Comes with a little bit of a legacy. No doubt. Great program. Played under Coach Adams there. Got some good lacrosse games. I, I believe it was um, uh, Maryland-Michigan in the Big Ten. We got uh, yep. Hopkins in Ohio State as well. Big Ten getting their lacrosse going, getting all their spring sports going. They kind of la last to the party here. Yeah, yeah. You also got Duke Townsend. It'll be uh, Sean Natalin's uh, first game head coaching. The, uh, uh, a little two-game suspension, self-imposed. Uh, so uh, it'll be good to see Coach. Uh, Sean's a great guy, a uh, great coach, too. So uh, I'd like to see that matchup, Duke and uh, Townsend, later on today. Of course, Townsend, Anthony Gallardi's former club. It's been eight years there as the offensive coordinator for the Tigers. Had a great run with him. Made it to a Final Four, five NCAAs in total. Yeah. Good job by Stony Brook's D here, tightening it up a little bit. Ten on the shot clock for Bryant. Bonayuto trying to work for position. Oh, Long shot, up. sliding stop, Palma. Dugan trying to get out. Good job. I tell you, Tom Dugan really is a hustler when it comes to picking up ground balls and doing some of the dirty work plays. Oh, no doubt. I mean, it's a special type player. You know, doesn't get a lot of scoreboard, right, a lot of press on it. But without guys like that, I mean, those are the guys that really make a team fly. You know, does just does his job, does everything well. Oh, hard yeah. hit. Great ride by Bryant there. Yep. Yeah, they weren't able to get it over under the the, uh, the 20 seconds. Um, uh, uh, it's a violation on them on the clear. Good. Hey, give Bryant credit. They're playing that deep zone ride. They're getting a long pole to the middle to try and jump anybody who comes over. So we'll give Bryant credit on that. And again, like Coach Gulati said, you know, that the clearing game, we want to tighten it up a little bit. You know what I mean? When we talked to him during the week. And there's a good example by Bryant, you know, uh, stopping that from happening. Really that first hard designed zone ride we've seen from Bryant that is executed in order to force the turnover. So they get the extra possession. Yeah, it's like the yeah. old neutral zone trap in hockey, right? Yeah. They want to try to get him over there and get that long pole on a long pole if they can. And, and it happened a bunch of times in the first half too, Sam. 35 seconds to play in the third period. Stony Brook. Outscoring Bryant three to one in this quarter. Yeah, watch uh, watch this little crease play here uh, from Bryant. Right, you're gonna get the dodge off the top here. Watch that pick slip. Here comes the midi over the top. It's McGovern. 15 seconds. Great job by Cassidy there. 
They can't hold for the last shot. Bonayuto raked it home. Scooped up by Dugan. Five seconds. Long ball. Oh, good. oh I don't, can't, uh, don't Corey hold it. <laughs> yeah, almost. <laughs> almost Hail Mary. Almost. And that's how the third quarter ends. So Stony Brook gets on top here 10-8 to eight after the third quarter. Palinetti, DeMeo, and McCannell getting the Seawolves back on top. We'll be back with the fourth in just a moment. Yeah, a uh, uh, really uh, well-paced, uh, excuse me, paced uh, third quarter there. Uh, not too many fouls. A bunch of goals. A lot different yeah, uh, than the compared first to half. the first half. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Aiden Goltz, who had the assist on the Dabrinsky goal, only one of the third period for Bryant. Logan McGovern with a full head of steam. He can really move, and he plays it for Bonnie Uto. Jumping Save. shot and a good stop by Anthony Palma. Stony Brook goalie makes his 10th save on the day. Fresh shot clock for Bryant. I mean, La Liberty's performance at the faceoff X, and you've got Anthony's performance in the goal. Uh, that's why we're at where we're at. You know what I mean? Anthony's done a great, great job making some big-time stops in there. Palma with 10 saves. La Liberty has won 16 or 15 of 21 draws. Oof. For Bryant at the faceoff X. Sun's come out, but it's really chilly here in Stony Brook. See all the snow in the background. Got pounded again. More snow yesterday, last weekend. They, they had to clear everything off. The Bobcat about 24 hours ago, this whole field was covered in a blanket. Yeah, props to uh, Stony Brook facilities. facilities and yeah. grounds crew did a great job of getting the surface ready to play. Have a women's game here tomorrow. Stony Brook takes on Boston. Oh, the save. Another Woo. save by Palma. 15 to shoot for Bryant. I uh, got a full lady there, Sam. Right off the save to get the, the shot clock resets. Oh, yep, yep. That's oh, right. Hey, look, look at this. Then. Here's Bryant, right? Got a new 80. Going to substitute. Get some fresh legs on there. Weingarten and Groninger coming. Really in. good job coaching right there. Really, really good job. Recognize it. Get some... Uh, a new midfield unit out there to attack uh, Stony Brook's D. Been out there a while now. Here comes Weingarten in a long shift good here. Good job, Tommy Dugan. Wow, Dugan oh, with a good check. Just got to get to those ground balls. Loose ball comes out. It's collected by Bryant. Austin Kent. Working against Amelia Estrello. Pushes him out. Good extension on the check. Strong. And another check. Jake Bonayuto. Mirroring Palma, who's got Trenkel to assist him right in the crease. Logan McGovern will redirect the here. offense. Yep. Got a little shorty Tommy Dugan. McGovern. Tough feed. Tough feed indeed. And O'Leary can't scoot the ground ball. McGovern. Abladian's got two goals. 15 to shoot now for Bryant. Bulldogs have had the ball for the first three minutes of this fourth quarter. How do they finish it? Weingarten. And he misses wide with six to shoot. Stony Brook bench fired up. Yep, they're subbing off. Right, they're going to get their defensive unit on the midfield. Going to attack it here, six on four. See what happens. Nothing there. Good check. Yep, so All right, hey, give, give Stony Brook a good job on defense there. Palmer come up with two big saves. All right, uh, Brian was able to come up with two big ground balls. Right, and, uh, you know, Stony Brook's on the, uh, on the offensive now. A long shift for Bryant, and it comes yeah. up empty, and you saw Palmer there, the defense, the Stony Brook bench, all fired up. Hey, listen, I would say we don't know what the rest of the quarter is going to show, but, hey, uh, make note of that. That's set right there. Good stop by Palmer on two boot saves. The defense going to do a good job of keeping uh, Bryant at bay. It's starting to sense that the Seawolves might have some momentum now. They go to work on offense for the first time in the fourth. Yeah, you got to feed off that defensive end offensively. Chris Bakel Jr. from Mike McCannell has two goals. Working on Emmett Kemble. Fakes the pass to Mayo. Instead plays Van Genhoven. Slides it for Hahn. Out top for Palinetti. Angled down for McCannell. Gets a little bit of a check from John Miller. The ball comes loose. Kept in play by Hahn. 22 on the shot clock for the Seawolves. Hahn moves in. Denied by Caracciolo. And the loose ball picked up on the back end by Miller. Ride by DeMeo, and the clear ahead to the long pole, and Zach Coffey coming right down Main Street, and he whips it, and a good stop with a stick by Anthony Paul. Great save, great save there. I don't know if Coach Russell's thrilled with that shot, but there, you know what I mean? You got a good stop on defense, though, but hey, 
right? You know, that's one of your big time players in coffee. You, you got to let him play. 11th save of the afternoon for Palma. Feet in front for Trenkel, and the long ball couldn't handle it. Oh, good check. Able to check it out, though, and regain possession. And there's a whistle. <laughs> Coach a Kalani, timeout. <laughs> he's seen enough. He's seen enough. Let's get a timeout here uh, and, and possess the ball. Um, great job to hit, and a great run by Tommy Hahn there. Didn't get the finish, though, but it was good to see him um, start. And yeah, we'll keep it right here for the timeout. Anthony Gallardi. He's put on them, and who wouldn't want to come and play for Anthony Gallardi, you know? Absolutely. On the other side, Luke Caracciolo in the Bryant net, who had 18 saves in this matchup last season. Only five today. And he's let up a couple of goals here in the second half with his team trailing. So it's 10-8 Stony Brook. And after the timeout, the Seawolves reset and go to work with a fresh 80. Caleb Pearson, Canadian from Langley, British Columbia. Palinetti working on rule. Pearson opposite Keaton Jones. Comes that early double again, early slide. Seen a lot of that from Bryant's defense today. Palinetti, jumping shot, sweeping save. save, Caracciolo. Great save. You know, I, like I said before, I don't think Sternberg's taking advantage of those early doubles, those early slides of uh, of Bryant, man. You want you, you see that coming, or if you feel it coming, you get communication that it's coming, you got to get that ball moving, right? And attack the backside and try to create, uh, try to find that two-on-one, which is created by Bryant uh, coming a little early, being aggressive on defense. I don't know that Sternberg's taking advantage of that today. Just tried to start up another two-man game set on the high wing, and they work it down low to Hahn. Flips it down low for Pearson. Van Genhoven really athletic in the middle. Not sure who that was for. It ended up in <laughs> Anderson's stick. Yeah, I think that was for Tommy cutting across <laughs> lefty. But, uh, hey, if it's coming towards you, those guys, those crease guys, they're going to grab it. <laughs> 33 to shoot. <laughs> that's it's that Pearson. That's that Canadian influence, man. It was coming near me. I'm grabbing onto it. Uh, unforced turnover here. Uh, a little of a long of exchange. Maybe it's the break that Bryant needed with less than nine to play. Yeah, not the ideal situation coming out of a timeout for Coach Gallardi. You use those timeouts, you want to... You want to make him uh, pay for you on the offensive side of the field. Will Ronan racing forward. A freshman from Michigan. Over to another freshman in the Bladian, and they bring it onto the near side. Austin Kent. Trevor Weingarten. They'll look to his leadership here to mount a comeback. Remember, no Mark O'Rourke today, no Jack Curran. Both out. Groninger, who scored the big one with seven minutes to go last week against Providence. That proved to be the difference. Abladian. Groninger again. Wayne White working in the defensive midfield. Get lower, get lower, Wayne. Leverage there, yeah. and uh, Groninger unable to connect. Here's a run out. Michael Sabella leading the charge. Over the top, over the top. There you go. David Mealy Estrella with a shooting lean, and already hits. <laughs> David Mealy Estrella from distance for Stony Brook. No, oh, what a great job. Uh, great look by Corey to get it to Estrada over the top. Hey, it's always special when those D-Midis score, all right? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Here it is, Corey. Corey sees the, you know, the, the, uh, the odd numbers, and no one picks up Estrada. He steps in about 15 yards out, high to high, right in the corner. A huge drive from David Mealy Estrella, who's able to plant and fire right down the pipe and beat Caracciolo to make an 11 to eight Stony Brook advantage. Great job by Estrella, good finish. His third goal in his Stony Brook career and the junior out of North Babylon from Long Island makes it a three goal Stony Brook advantage. Yeah, you're always worried about that, that you know, deadly three goal lead, you know, it's either, <laughs> it's either you pull it out or they tie it. <laughs> and you wonder, you know, Bryant had the pacing in the first half, the penalties were coming in the first half. Yeah, that's the first and violation by La Liberty, right off of yep. a big D midi scoring for, for Stony Brook. Uh, but there, they, they, they caught him for a violation in Stony Brook ball. The Seawolves have harnessed the momentum. See, here's the thing too, Sam, right? We, we talked about Bryant wanted to play with, you know, time of possession, shorten the game up. Can they play fast, right? Down by three. Uh, DeMeo shot got hit in front. McCannell shot it to the moon. Oh, oh look. Little, little confusion here. I think the uh, 
the uh, lead official thought the ball had gone out of bounds and blew his whistle, but it actually went off the defender. Yep. Um, yeah, where uh, McCann picked the ball up, and he actually let it ride there. Yeah. <laughs> and a and, uh, little confusion there, but I, I, it should stay with Stony Brook, uh, Stony Brook here. And the officials are coming together to discuss it. Yep. So, yeah, it's, it's got to say here, the, the, the lead official had the ball out of bounds going to Stony Brook, irregardless of McCannell taking that shot. It was his mistake, uh, thinking that, the, you know, the ball had gone out of bounds, but it really had come to McConnell here. So it would have been Stony Brook's ball through possession or backing up the goal e either way. So good job by the officials there getting together and making it uh, making the correct call. Yeah, I'll reset the shot clock too as well. Yep. Going to run it back one more time. Fresh 80 for the Seawolves. 11 to 8, Stony Brook, 727 to play. Game reset, one timeout for Stony Brook, two timeouts for Bryant. And the Seawolves have outscored Bryant 5 to 1 going back to the end of the first half. And a yeah, hook around Dylan Palane that draws yeah, a penalty. Get a Brody Roll is going to get called here. Yeah, good job by Dylan. Dunked underneath his right hand, tried to come back to his left. Uh, Brody got a stick caught up around uh, Dylan's neck, and you know that's that's that, that's an easy call by the official. So holding against Brody Rule for Bryant. Stony Brook goes on the man advantage. Seawolves one out of four today with the extra man. It is a 30-second penalty. Stonybrook wheels into a 2-3. Dylan uh, at the, uh, the high middle. Yeah, Bryant. Usually, uh, usually um, uh, Chris Piquel or uh, Matty DeMayer are up there, though. Here comes Chris. McCannell. Good one more finish, Tom. Hahn. Wow. And it caught Caracciolo right in the ankle. That one's got a sting. Ooh, big time save in this cold weather. Yeah. <laughs> Stony Brook bench fired up. They get to that loose ball and keep possession. Van Genhoven underneath, and he hits. It's Corey Van Genhoven with a hat trick, and it's Stony Brook running away with it in the fourth quarter up 12-8. to eight. Yeah, great job by uh, Tommy Hahn to play fast off the whistle. He swings the ball quick to the backside to... Uh, to Corey Vangenhoven, who steps around and finishes low. So Vangenhoven scores his third goal of the day. It's his eighth career hat trick. You can make it back-to-back -back hat tricks to start the season for the senior out of North Carolina. And Stony Brook has taken all the momentum here with 6.38 to play. Yeah, like I said, that's a great job by Tommy Hahn. You know, veteran guy, knows to play quick off the whistle. You know, it was man down. And actually, the penalty had been up, and uh, Bryant was trying to come in and find their matchups. Couldn't do it in time, and uh, Corey did a great job of burying it. See, there's another big faceoff win, right? Yep. He had the violation before, <coughs> and now a good win here. Stony Brook's been able to just win yep. enough faceoffs. They've only won 8 out of 24 today, but that's just been enough. That's about 1 out of every uh, 3. So a two-to-one ratio in favor of Bryant, but Seawolves have done a better job in the second half at gaining possession out of the X. And here we go, final six minutes of the game. One more. Okay, you know, I thought Corey was going to turn the corner there. But good job possessing it, right? Smart decision. You know, let's keep continue to work for the best shot. Pearson dodges in and scores. Yeah, he's deadly. I mean, did a great job of running by. His guy got to the middle of the field. Uh, and this is the Stony Brook we saw last week, right? You know, taking advantage of matchups, uh, keeping their feet moving, getting to the middle of the field and burying it. You know, here's a great job. Caleb does a good job. The slide doesn't come. Listen, there's nothing, there's nothing um, Carciolo can do about that. You know, that's a, a deadly shooter right in the middle of the field from eight from you. Caleb Pearson gets a goal, and Stony Brook now leads by five, and it looks like the Seawolves are on their way to a potential 2-0 start. Still 5.50 to go. Yep, still got some time, you know, um, and a lot of liberty is the guy who can do it. He, you know, win a couple of face-offs here. Uh, you know, you can change the tie quickly. Oh, there's a quick violation on uh, um, uh, Deskowitz there. I think he got down after the set call and uh, shifted. So that, that'll be uh, that one. I, th I think they only had, that's their first violation in the second half. So yep. um, they got some time on there. But uh, let's see what Brian can do. Uh, Stony Brook went on a little run here. Uh, got to get to nine before you can get to 13. Stony Brook has scored four straight. Oh, 
Shake and bake from Goltz. Weingarten turned away by Estrella, who had the goal earlier. And Anthony Palma able to get his stick to that one again. He has really clamped down. He really has. He's done a tremendous job uh, in the goal today, you know, and especially in the second half. Um, he's eating up everything that's coming at him, you know. Uh, other than that one goal in transition, that caught him, not, you know, not his fault. He's done a wonderful, wonderful job. What a great second game for Anthony. Look at his pass. Oh, just missed. Oh, trying to feather it over for Piquel. Loose ball in front. Han got caught up in there. <laughs> <laughs> I think Coach Galati took his last time out yep, there. <laughs> yep. He burns the last one, <laughs> and Stony Brook will come in uh, to the near side and re regroup here Absolutely. with 444 to go. <laughs> Tommy picked that up in a little bit of a hornet's nest there. <laughs> so it's 13-8. to 8. The Seawolves, the number 20 team in the country, they were able to break into the polls after they demolished Sacred Heart last Saturday. 20 to 8 victory, and now they lead 13 to 8 against Bryant, a really good defensive team that only let up eight goals against Providence. And you look at Mike Pressler right there. What do you think he's saying in his huddle to his guys to see if they can pick themselves off up, up off the mat? Yeah, I, I think it's you know the next play uh, mentality on here too. You know they've been unfortunate for um, you know, a four goal run by Stony Brook here though, but it's the next play, right? It's still plenty of time to go in the game, and the game of lacrosse. Uh, especially with uh, a lot of liberty at the face off X. Get a good stop here on defense, right? Play to the next one, get it quick. But, hey, I don't know if you can get it past Palmer. I mean, he's really, really seeing the ball well. I mean, shoot, it must be like a volleyball coming at him. That's how big it must be. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're the forward goalie. I mean, that's what it looks like when you get into a groove. <laughs> no doubt. When, when, you're, when you're in a groove like he's in right now, I mean, that thing looks like a volleyball coming at you, like I said. <laughs> um, so so uh, it'll be tough. But, hey, next play for Bryant, get a stop here on D and try and make it count on the offensive half. And Stony Brook, you're going to see uh, Mike Chaninchuk, the offensive coordinator for the Seawolves there. If you see him in the beanie, <laughs> kind of off to the right side of your screen. A there he is, trying to stay warm. Two-time <laughs> PLL champion with Whip Snakes. All-America in his college career with Princeton and Maryland. Huge pickup for this Stony Brook staff. He's been with Coach Anthony Gallardi the last couple of years now. And at first it was going to be Coach Gallardi drawn up the offense, but then he said, hey, I, hang on a second. got to get this no guy doubt. and get Coach Chani here. Yeah, in the driver's seat. And My, Mike's going to do great. Mike's going to be a great he'll be a head coach one day, no doubt. Uh, he spent some time with us over at New York Tech before moving to Sacred Heart, now here to Stony Brook, back home again. Uh, he, he's just a, he's just a, a great, great personality. Uh, you know, really comes across well to his players uh, as an even-keeled guy, you know. And listen, the main thing, he knows the game. He knows it very, very well. I mean, he's one of the best shooters in the world, uh, you know, playing in the PAL. But uh, – uh, you look for special things in the future for Mike Chanich. McCannell, free run, and a, a goal. It's Mike McCannell's third goal of the day. A hat trick for the Canadian, and Stony Brook is pouring it on here in the fourth. Yeah, that might be the uh, the final nail right there. I mean, no slide comes here. The poor Demon is on the trail. It's late. Um, and listen, a shooter like Mike, hey, it's going to be buried from eight yards out. That's a great job. Mike McCannell. That's how you want to come out of a timeout, like before with the turnover. You know, uh, Coach Galati calls his last timeout, and hey. <laughs> Look at the silly <laughs> there on the near side. <laughs> exactly right. Great job. Good job by Mike. Good finish. So number 92, a senior out of Orangeville, Ontario, gets a hat trick. And now Bryant in a real hole here down by six. They had not trailed until early in the third quarter, a timeout taken uh, on the field by Mike Pressler. Yeah, I think that's a good timeout by Mike. I think he wants to, you know, settle his guys down real quick, get to nine, right? Get to nine uh, as quick as he can, right? Inside of uh, uh, a, a few uh, a few seconds here, uh, I would say. I would say I would look to see them go within thirty seconds of this Wilson being blown in again, uh, and then to have um, um, La Liberty again win another faceoff. I don't think they'll take a timeout there, but now you're at, you know, uh, it's a six goal lead now, five goal lead. Is it possible to tie this game in four twenty, Sam? Absolutely. Yep, you never know. There's still plenty of ball left to play. And, you know, Mike Pressler is not one to lay down and let his guys roll over. Very passionate when we spoke to him earlier yeah. this week. And, I mean, the amount of gusto that he brings to the table, wanting his guys to play, backing his players, especially during COVID right now with all the regulations that they have to deal with. And he asks them in a constant refrain, how bad do you want to play? And some of the things that they have to do just to check the boxes to be able to to, to stay healthy and keep from uh, getting a positive test or something that could get a, 
a snag in their season. Yeah. He said it. There's so much uh, lingo in coaching now with COVID where it's you can't. You can't do this. You can't do that. Right. Which is the complete opposite of what a coach normally thinks. And he's really tried to stick with his players here and love seeing them play as they trail by six on the road. So it's Aiden Goltz after the timeout, and now Kevin Groninger crossing feed for McGovern, who misses wide. Yeah, that's a set play. You saw the uh, initial creation on the, the uh, right side of uh, Palma. Uh, they get the pick on the back side. You saw Logan cut through for a shot. He just missed the cage there. A lady in a little stutter step. Kind of a Deion Sanders right there. Yeah. <laughs> Hits it into the ground. Trying to get his hands free. I tell you, he's had a nice day today, too, as Groninger misses high. Two goals for Abladian. Yeah, he's going against a big guy. Got David Cassie, Danny Cassie, he's a big man. You know what I mean? So you need your feet to create space to get around him. McGovern oh. can really move. And he Shot misses one. wide. Groninger off the wing. Flashes it towards Palma. I think that might have been a save. I think that went yeah. off of uh, Anthony's left shoulder there. I think he did get a yeah, piece, yeah. too. <clears throat> if they do count it, it will end up going down as the 15th save of the day for Palma. Yep. Landing the crease. Uh, you know, a little shot wide there. But, hey, uh, Bryant's doing everything they can to try to get another goal here. But, uh, you know, congratulations to... You know, to uh, to Palmer, what a great, great job so far today. And and the the, the, the lockdown of the Stony Brook D in the second half. They've done a really, really good job of forcing um, the 10-man ride there. Empty net and yep. it was yeah, Mikel almost, yeah, almost 70 yards away. Al almost bearing it. The 10-man ride there by uh, by Coach Pressler and the Bryant. But here's the thing, because, listen, you, you got to take some chances, right? You're down by six. You know, whether you lose by six or seven, it, it doesn't really matter. You know, do everything you can to get the ball back. Exactly. And they did, and they did. But like I was saying before, uh, you know, great job by Stony Brook's D. Uh, Coach Brazel in, in the second half making some adjustments. Uh, and this goes for his final timeout. So Bryant takes one more timeout. And you saw the 10-man ride there try and press to get the ball back, and they eventually did and yep. take a little bit of a chance. Uh, next up for both of these teams, Bryant will take on Vermont and their non-conference finale Next weekend, it is a home game. It is a noon start for them. And then Stony Brook goes on the road, battle of Long Island, and take on Hofstra on the road next weekend. So no. their first game away from home. No, absolutely. Last weekend you had St. John's uh, beat Hofstra. Uh, Stony Brook's going to play Hofstra. It's good to see that, you know, that those those teams that are local here getting that little three-man round robin to uh, to keep lacrosse. Uh, help recruiting as well, right? You know, if you if you beat both of them, you know, I know Stony Brook wasn't able to, to book St. John's this year, uh, but hopefully they can continue to play that, you know, that, that uh, three-team round robin of uh, New York lacrosse. You get a look in the uh, Stony Brook huddle. Uh, J.P. Brazel, the defensive coordinator with the American flag gator on his back, Coach Gallardi in there as well. But <laughs> Coach Brazel will be uh, playing against his alma mater next week when they go to Hofstra, a former goalie there for the Pride. Yeah, he also coached there for a long, long time on the Seth Tierney. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, listen, you always want to go back. Listen, I, when I was coaching, it's always good to play your friends, right? It's always good to beat <laughs> your friends. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but it's also a special thing. JP does a tremendous job. Again, he's another guy that, that could be a head coach somewhere as well. Uh, but, and Anthony did a great job of putting the staff together between Michael Chanachuk Jr. And, and J.P. Brazel. And, hey, kudos to him. You know, uh, the defense did a great job. Uh, you mentioned how the defense has adjusted in this second half. Stony Brook has only given up one goal in the second half, and that was kind of a little bit of a fluke when the ball got yep. out of that little scrum yep. uh, to Dabrinsky, who slotted it home for Bryant. That made it 8-8. Eight to eight. Six goals later, Stony Brook leads 14-8, to eight, and Bryant, with no more timeouts to go, has 2.40 to try and make it a little closer here. It's McGovern. Pounded down by Sabella. Bench gets fired up for that one. And here comes Christian Lau, the long stick midfielder, full speed ahead. Great job by Mike Sabella there. One-on-one -on -one matchup. You know what? Uh, those big, don't strong defensemen, you know. And he just said, not here. Not today. You know what? You had your turn in the first half. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to make sure this doesn't happen again. Great job by Mike. Palinetti running around for days with it, and the shot almost to finish it off. I think it might have gotten the post. I agree, yeah. 
It still comes out for Van Genhoven, and he'll reset with Chris Pickell. Stony Brook in no hurry here with two minutes to go. Pickell with a long run. Net is empty, and that one's on the line. Oh, a little backspin there. Didn't it? Yeah, somehow it, 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 it did not go, go in. in. <laughs> Caracciolo is off his line. I, I want to say it was Coffee who was down there, too, to try and clear it. Somehow, Chris Pickell unable to score with the empty net. Is there had to be a weird little tailspin on that ball to keep it out? Yeah, and again, you know, Coach Pressler and the Bulldogs doing a great job there. You know, you heard a call called Red Dog. Uh, that's their signal for their goalie uh, to jump out and, and, and jump to play, uh, try to double it and put the ball on the ground to get the ball back. Uh, you got to love it. They're still working for 60 minutes to finish up. Uh, you know, uh, any way they can get better. Ground ball comes to Tom Hahn, about as far out as we've seen him today. Yeah, Tommy's had a quiet day, you know, but that's okay too. You know, hey, you know what? You know, what he provides in practice each week and leadership, I'm sure in some of those huddles he had some some positive things to say to his teammates to keep their, their uh, uh, tough exchange there. Yeah. Well, that goes to show, I mean, the Stony Brook offense, good as advertised because they can beat you in so many ways. Yes. Van Genhoven with a hat trick back-to-back to, -back to start the season. McCannell with a hat trick. DeMeo gets on the score sheet again. Yeah, Wayne yeah. White on the score sheet again. David Meliastrella with the uh, D midi goal as well. Yeah, so look at that. Last week, attack heavy goal scoring. This week, it's midfield. Uh, this Stony Brook team, man, they keep getting better and better. They're going to be a hard to be a hard team to beat, uh, especially in conference. Anderson had two. Pearson had one. Palinetti also had one. It's another one for Palma. And Anthony <laughs> Palma also maybe your man of the match. Unbelievable day, making more than sixteen saves. Final 20 seconds to go at Laval Stadium. Bryant will drop to 1-1. One one. The Bulldogs take on Vermont next weekend. Stony Brook finds a way. The Seawolves trailed 4-0 to start this game. They were able to tie it back up at 4. We were tied going into the break, 7-7. And then it was a Stony Brook demolition to close out the game. The Seawolves score six consecutive goals and knock down Bryant 14-8 to go to 2-0 on the season. Yeah, a uh, tremendous job in the second half defensively for the, for the uh, Seawolves. You know, congratulations, Anthony, with another uh, – the Seawolves with another good win. And, and listen, and, and Coach Fessler will get back to work on Monday. Yeah, they'll get prepared again uh, for their next game, though. So they're going to keep their heads. A lot of good things uh, happened today for the Bulldogs as well. And like we said – Stony Brook wasn't getting, uh, wasn't winning the face-off X, but they got stops. And uh, I think uh, Anthony Palmer had one hell of a day today. He's got to have the, uh, he's your player of the game, the I goalie. Would, I, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, a little biased there, though. But, but like I said, if you're not winning face-offs, right, you got to get stops. And I, I really do think that Anthony, you know, if there is a, a game ball today, hey, he, he's a, he, he did a great, great job. I don't know what his total saves were, uh, but they're definitely in double digits. And anytime you get double digits and saves, it usually ends up with single digits uh, uh, for the opponent in the scoreboard, and there we, there we have it. It's a good formula. There he is, Anthony Palma, 16 saves today in total, 14 goals for the Seawolves, who are fired up with their goalkeeper as they move to 2-0 and on the season. Well, that's it for us here at Laval Stadium. Thank you for tuning in. Hope you have a great rest of your weekend. For our entire crew, our director, Chris Lizio, our executive producer, Adam Rubin, my friend, Tim Tuttle, I'm Sam Niederman. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Stay warm out there. Stony Brook wins 14-8. to